everyone welcome to today's class and i hope all is going good and in today's class we're going to see one important topic called tanning this is also one uh one type under thermal processing where we use a time and a temperature combination to preserve food that is to destroy the microorganism or any other harmful pathogenic organism and make the food safe for the consumer the most important aspect of canning is that it is one of the effective method of preservation and it increases its shelf life up to two years now so this is one of the important question who is the father of canning or who discovered canning it is nothing but nicholas appet he discovered the scanning process in 1790 so once he tried to uh, he just uh, put a spot into a container and then subjected it to heat treatment and found this process was really very effective okay this preservation process were really was really very effective and um, so that's why uh, he is termed okay as a father of uh, canning now so this uh, canning process will usually be done in airtight jars or cans or pouches provided they need to be very tightly sealed so the food would be put into airtight jars or cans or pouches and then they would be sealed and then it would be subjected to a high heat treatment or uh, not high very high treatment depending upon the microorganism present in particular food so when you heat treatment or when you subject the can to a heat treatment it destroys the contaminating microorganisms now what are the four types of processes involved in canning they are nothing but reforming blanching seaming and exhausting so now let's get into detail about each and every type so what do you mean by reforming reforming is very simple like i will just show you a small diagrammatic representation where the can would be a flattened surface so when uh, when okay when you subject such a flattened surface into a reforming machine okay what happens is that the can would become okay uh, would turn to a perfect circle so this process is called as reforming so can reforming machine is a first step where a flattened part of can okay flattened can is turned to a perfect circle shape now what is flanging flanging is nothing but okay this is uh to say there's uh if you take a can there's one part called as a flange this flange will always help in sealing okay sealing of the upper lid and the i mean sealing or we can use the term called seaming okay you will be learning it in the next process so it is nothing but the flange is one part of the body of the can where it helps okay in the seaming process or sealing process of the upper and the bottom lid so they say that there's one outer flat head okay it will be on the top of the can so this becomes a body hook of the double sink for example so this is a can so they, there would be an upper flat okay upper flat head okay it would be like this so when you okay uh, uh when you okay when you process it or when you do this flanging process it, this becomes a body hook of the double sink so when you okay put this can into a flanging machine what happens is that uh, both the upper part and the lower part okay would take place over part of the flanging takes place simultaneously okay next okay we use a semi automatic press type operation uh, for this flanging process now so only when your flanging is consistent a uh, consistent and even okay then you will have a proper seaming process for this flanging you usually use a cast iron so they say that a high accuracy and consistency is required for a perfect flanging next seaming seaming is nothing but sealing okay uh, when you put a food into a can i said already you you are supposed to seal the 
can okay that is very very important process okay here it's seeming we use a can seamer okay which seals the lid to the body of the can okay it seals the lid to the body of the can so when the seaming is proper there won't be any leakage okay the seaming is usually done to uh, have a leak proof can next so this seam is usually made by mechanically overlapping the two layers to form a hook okay they, what they do is that they overlap two layers to form a hook okay very simple if you see the term seaming it is nothing but sealing so what it is used for it is nothing but it that it gives a leak proof to the can next so during this scan seaming process the seamer chalk holds the can while the rolls rotate around it okay what they say is that there's one seamer chalk it will hold the can and uh, and the rolls okay rotate around the can initially the first operation of roll folds the lid and then the second operation rolls tightens the resulting seam so the first operation is nothing but a uh, folding of the lid okay and the second operation is nothing but it tightens the resulting seam okay i this is one of the diagrammatic representation of a seaming process so this part is called as the body hook you can see two layers we already learned the two layers would be involved to form a body hook okay? the inner part is one layer and the outer part is the other layer so this part is called as the overlap okay overlapping of one layer over the other layer so the and the this part is called as the cover hook and this is this would be the total seam length of the i hope you understand what is seaming now what is exhausting so it is nothing but a process which is involved in removing the headspace gas from the cans so this would okay create an oxygen free environment only when okay the can is oxygen free okay you can okay what you uh, we can preserve the food okay to a larger extent okay if there's oxygen in the can there would be certain reactions pertaining okay to the ineffective preservation of the can gradually decreasing the shelf life and making it harmful for the consumer now this exhausting can take place by three processes the first process is called as the thermal exhausting and the second process is called as steam closing and the third process is called as vacuum sealing now what is thermal exhausting thermal exhausting is nothing but the cans okay would be sent into a tunnel okay uh, so when you okay subject a can into a tunnel okay they would be heated causing the contents inside the uh, can to expand so after okay after expansion they, are, they would be retorted and cooled so when they are cooled okay and retorted the contents inside the can would contract so thus producing a vacuum so this is called as what thermal exhausting the next thing is that steam closing here uh, the steam of 250 degree fahrenheit is injected into a head space of the filled can okay so uh, what happens gradually when the steam condenses as it cools it creates a vacuum removing the oxygen from the can please note down uh, or the temperature of the steam this is very important now vacuum sealing is nothing but uh, you you pack okay the cold pack products okay in a vacuum chamber this is very simple now retorting a retorting is nothing but a cold vessel or, or something or any kind of equipment uh, that is used for thermal processing so only uh, what will happen is that after the can is packed and sealed they would be put into a retorting machine okay subjecting the can to a heat treatment and destroying the harmful microorganism so this retorting temperature would be always greater than 212 degree fahrenheit now so when this retorting is done is that so immediately after the air is being exhausted okay the can will be sealed and then they would be put into a retorting machine for thermal processing 
after thermal processing you usually subject a can to cooling so why this cooling is done it's because um, there would be a soft a bit softening of the texture of the product for example it's going to be a vegetable or fruits when you subject to heating what happens is that normally when we cook it gets okay it gets very soft so to avoid this soft uh, texture cooling is done it is also done because to protect the color of the product okay okay if, if it is heated continuously or if it is allowed to cool down naturally there may be a change in the color of the product in order to control this softening of the texture and the change in color of the product we usually okay we are supposed to cool the can after thermal processing now this cooling can be done by two methods one is the air cooling and the other one is the water cooling air cooling is that the medium of cooling would be air and water cooling is nothing but the medium of cooling would be water composition of tin cans so uh, when uh, what type of can you should use okay for food use in food industry is that uh, uh, it should be a steel plate which has a low carbon content okay it should also be coated with a slight amount of thin tin which is of thickness 0 0.001 inches okay be very careful about the uh, content it should be a steel plate of low carbon content and thin with thickness of 0 0.001 okay now what are the compositions okay it's nothing but the steel composition can be like carbon sulfur phosphorus copper manganese and silicon okay uh, so when you learn uh, just have a uh, quick go through about the composition you might get it in your mcq okay okay this is a standard dimension where you have three types of can the first can will have a dimension of two okay double one into 400 and uh, the second can is 304 into 408 and the third type of can will be 401 into 4 411 so you they may ask okay what are the standard dimensions of a can okay so please just uh, just learn these um, these dimensions this is very important no so this is a canning okay this is uh this is a these are the parts of a can so this is called as a canner's end and this is okay can you see two double lines so this is called as the double c so when you take a can when you buy a product just check maybe some rasagulla tin or club jamun tin that would be okay after removing the label you could see a line so this line is called as the crossover okay there would be an indent okay if you could see is like a kind of a dent so it is called as the indent here so this is also called as a side seam okay crossover is nothing but the lip and the body of the can okay uh, will be merged or will be put together so that is called as a crossover so this entire line is called as what this entire line is called as the side seam so this part of the can is called as the body okay here there would be some kind of vents okay next okay the the bottom part of the seam is called as the manufacturer's double seam and the end is called as the manufacturer's end okay the upper part is called as the canner's end and the lower part is called as the manufacturer's end okay so that's all with today's class um so before completing uh we'll just give a quick brush up of what is canning so canning is also one of the thermal processing uh who's the father of canning is nothing but nicholas Appert. so what are the four processes of canning reforming flanging exhausting uh i mean reforming flanging seaming and exhausting reforming is nothing but the flattened part of the can is made into a perfect circle Flanging is nothing but it uh, flanges a part of a part of the body of a cam where it helps okay in proper seaming. Seaming is nothing but sealing, and the last part is exhausting. It's removal of oxygen from the can to preserve the food. Okay, please learn the composition of the can and the dimensions of the cam and uh, 
and all the process involved okay uh, yeah that's all thanks for watching please like share and subscribe